Hello, Miguel from Grumo here and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to connect PayPal with your Glide app. So every time a transaction happens in PayPal, your app knows about it. All right, so to do that, we're going to use a Glide account. It has to be a pro account in order to have access to the Glide API that allows you to write back into Glide tables. Then you'll need a Zapier account and that's where we're going to create a trigger where every time there's a successful sale in PayPal, that is going to trigger a call back to Glide where we're going to write inside the Glide app table. In this case, we're gonna create a sales table. We're gonna record all the sales transactions. And of course, you're going to need a PayPal account where you're going to create a PayPal button that once gets uh, used, is going to trigger that zap that writes into your Glide table. All right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, create a new project inside Glide and then you can go to your Glide data editor and you need to create a sales table where you're going to record all the sales transactions. So we're gonna create here on a new table, we're gonna call it sales and then we're going to add a few columns. One is going to be the email of the purchaser, and that's going to be an email. Then it's going to be the amount that they paid. So it's going to be a number with two digits, and we're going to add the dollar sign here, okay? And we can also leave the name, we can have the date of the transaction, so that's gonna be a date column, okay? And if we want to, we can store the transaction ID from PayPal. And finally, we could also store the product that was uh, purchased, all right? So that would be the product ID, perfect. So now we have a table where we can start writing data to from PayPal using Zapier. So the next step is that we're going to add a button on one of our pages here. And before we do that, we need to enter a price column because on our table, we don't have a price. We're gonna say this is gonna be the price and we're gonna make this a number with two digits and we're gonna put the dollar sign in front and we're just gonna enter prices, okay? So let's say that everything costs here, you know, 20 bucks, right? 20 bucks, 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 20 bucks. 20 bucks, 20 bucks. Now, an important thing to know is that in order for this to work, you need to create inside PayPal custom PayPal buttons. And each PayPal button is associated to a specific amount and you cannot change that dynamically. So that means that you are limited to the amount of buttons you can create inside PayPal, uh, which is a thousand. So if you have a thousand different products, then you could do it. If you have more, uh, then it'd be uh, not useful to use PayPal. That's fantastic, bombastic. And now what we can do is create a row ID so every product has a unique ID, okay? And now we can go to any of the products and we can add the value here if you wanted to for, you know, so we know what the price is. And the next thing is we would add a button. Now, Glide already comes with a buy button on paid accounts, which works with Stripe. That means you have to create a Stripe account and then you will connect it and then you could buy directly from your app using Stripe. So this is the ideal way of doing it, but many people either don't have access to Stripe or prefer using PayPal. So this is why I created this tutorial. All right, now uh, let me just create a custom button. It's gonna be called, uh, I'm just gonna type button and then gonna add it here and I'm gonna call it pay with pay. Pal, okay? And this is simply just going to open a link, right? Uh, which is going to be the link to the PayPal button, okay? So now we need to create a new column under things, which has the PayPal button link, which means we need to go to PayPal and create a PayPal button. And of course you could do this for as many buttons as you wanted. So then you would go to your PayPal account and under pay and get paid, you would go to PayPal buttons and here you would select a buy now button and now you would create your buy now but button, which in this case is gonna be for $20. All 
All right, so the item name could be whatever it is. Test product, the price is going to be 20. Uh, we're gonna charge in USD and we're gonna leave everything as the same. And we're not going to track the inventory in this case. We're gonna just click save button to PayPal. And then we're gonna say, do you want to let your customers change orders? No. Can your customer add special instructions and a message? Well, we can leave that there. Do you need your customer shipping address? No, because this is just going to be a digital product and we can leave everything else empty. And we're gonna create the button. As soon as we create the button, we're taken to a screen where we can grab the link of the button and we can paste that inside the column for the product, okay? So now if we go back to the user interface and select the button and we want to open a link, it's called, let's say we wanna open in a web view and the value of the link is gonna be the new added PayPal button link column. You can see the button disappears because this specific product doesn't have a link. So we could also add the value right here if you want it. Just click on the data button there and we could add the link right there. So now we can click on the buy button here and this is going to load a web view with the checkout page inside PayPal. And the next step is connecting your PayPal account with your Glide account using Zapier. So we are inside our Zapier account and we clicked on the create new zap button and we can give it a title. In this case, it's gonna be just PayPal to Glide. And now under the trigger, we can search for PayPal. And in order to use PayPal, you need a premium Zapier account, so you know. And then the event is going to be a successful sale. All right and we're gonna click continue. And then we're giving a webhook URL, which we need to add to our PayPal IPN settings inside our PayPal account. So we're gonna copy that. And then we go to our PayPal account and under account settings, we're going to search for IPN, press enter, and you're taken to instant payment notifications, click update. And then where it says notification URL, you will click edit settings and then we paste the webhook URL from Zapier here and click save. Now we can go back to Zapier and test the trigger. That takes a few seconds. And the test has been successful, so we can click continue. And then we need the action that connects back to Glide. And for that, we're going to use webhooks by Zapier, which is also available only on paid Zapier accounts. And the event is going to be a custom request. And we're gonna click continue. And then we need to fill this with the API call details from our Glide table. In this case, from our Glide sales table. For that, you go to the sales table here and then you right click and click show API. And we want to add a new row every time there's a new PayPal transaction. So for that, we're gonna click copy under add row and we need to fill in now all the info inside our Zapier account. So let me just paste all the data here and you get a bunch of data. A request link, the type of request is post and headers, and then the actual API call that adds a new row to the table. But what we need to do is choose the method, which is post, then the URL, which in this case is this one, perfect. We're gonna leave the data pass through empty, and then we're going to add the headers the headers are content type application dash JSON. So we go here to the headers and the first header is content type application type JSON. So that's one. The second header is authorization. And we are going to separate the header type from the actual value of the header. So authorization and that's the actual value of the header. And then we're just going to leave the values inside the brackets after data row. So that is, we're going to remove that and we're going to remove this. And now we have all the information that we need. So then we have to replace the placeholder values for each column with the values that we're receiving from PayPal. So for name, we can enter now the name that we're receiving from a successful sale in PayPal all right, for the email, we would do the same thing. We're gonna delete email. We're gonna grab the payer's email. For the amount, 
we're going to grab the amount for the date. We're going to grab the payment date for the transaction ID. We're going to grab the transaction ID. And for the product ID, we could go to a product. Then we would grab the product ID and we would paste it here. Now we know that this PayPal button belongs to the first product here. Unfortunately, you cannot dynamically generate the product's ID. So each button is gonna have a unique product ID. So you will have to create as many PayPal buttons as products as you have to. So this solution is not very efficient for large stores with many products. Just have that into account. Okay, so now we have all the data that we want to. We're gonna leave everything as the same. We can click continue and then we can test the action. Now, if this works, when we go to our sales table, a new row should be created automatically. So let's test this right now. Test action, and we got an error. The reason why is because I was missing the right amount of brackets here, right? There should be one, two, three closed brackets and one, two, three open brackets. Let's try again, continue. Test action, and if we go here to our table, we got another error. And the error is that we're missing the open and close quotations around each of the values that we're receiving from PayPal, okay? So another thing to pay attention. So brackets and open and close quotations. So let's try again, continue, test action, and now it should work. There you go. We have a new row added automatically from PayPal, thanks to our connection with Zapier. And we're done. That means every time somebody purchases a product using the custom PayPal button that we created, we will update our sales table and we can keep track of our sales. We can use this to give access to people that are buying access to our app, for example. And it all happens behind the scenes, thanks to the automation that we created with Zapier. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe if you want to see more tutorials on how to use a Glide to develop apps without coding. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.